Hi, I'm John Fancy. I work on the Logic Apps team at Microsoft, and I'm here to talk to you about enterprise integration at cloud scale using Logic Apps. So what am I going to talk about? Well, I'm going to tell you what Logic Apps is and give you a quick introduction about this great service that we have. I'm going to tell you what you can do with Logic Apps, so the rich connectivity, the flexibility and extensibility of the platform. And of course, I want you to get started using Logic Apps if you've never used it before as well. And I'm going to show you some great demos in terms of what Logic Apps can do and show you how the product works. So what is Logic Apps? Well, at its core, Logic Apps is our cloud scale integration workflow engine running in Azure. It provides the fastest way to be able to create workflows in the cloud using our incredible uh, visual designer that you see here. The way this works is you create a set of steps that work together with one another and collect data from the various services and software that you're going to connect with. And it all starts with a trigger. How does a Logic App fire? It could be from an FTP server in this case, where we're picking up files as they get processed, or it could be from Twitter as the new tweets are picked up from the queries that you provide, or SQL Server or Oracle DB on-premises using our great uh, on-premises data gateway. Uh, it provides easy workflow creation with these triggers and actions, and once you save your Logic App, it can be running straight away. You can also do this in Visual Studio as well as in the Azure portal, and with Visual Studio, you can integrate with the tool chains that we have to be able to do continuous uh, integration and deployments using Logic Apps uh, with Visual Studio. We have almost 200 connectors now on our platform, connecting everything from SaaS services like uh, Office 365 or Dynamics or Salesforce.com, or storage systems like OneDrive or Dropbox, or databases like Logic Apps, like uh, SQL Server or Oracle DB. Or well, again, connecting to on-premises systems like even SharePoint. Um, a rich, incredible variety of services, and you can even build your own connectors now as well. And it's built for mission-critical enterprise integration. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that you can rely on Logic Apps to run your business. Logic Apps works in a highly available mode in each region, so if a Logic App fails due to some kind of underlying hardware failure, you do not have to worry about that. We take care of it and resume your Logic App at the point of failure. Uh, you can also create, deploy, and manage your applications. So uh, Logic Apps writes out telemetry information to Operations Management Suite, or Log Analytics, and this allows you to look across all of the Logic Apps running in your environment and see what's going on, create alerts, and respond proactively to problems before they become serious issues. You can also do this in the Azure portal with our run history capabilities, where you can see all the way back for over 90 days of the Logic Apps that have run and uh, drill into that and understand the original inputs, the original trigger data for those Logic Apps to do diagnosis after the fact um, and also helping in debugging Logic Apps. All of this is, of course, is also available in Visual Studio with the Cloud Explorer integration that we have. Um, so fundamentally, uh, Logic Apps is a serverless technology as well. Uh, serverless technology doesn't mean that there are no servers. It just means you do not have to worry about the servers. You're not exposed to the servers. You don't have to manage a service, create and patch them. Um, you can just build your integration uh, applications using Logic Apps and deploy them, and they're running straight away with that abstraction layer of the underlying uh, hardware and uh, infrastructure underneath you. So this means that we scale up as appropriate and give you uh, reliable and predictable performance on our platform. It also means it reduces your uh, DevOps overhead of having to manage and maintain the underlying platform because we provide that as part of the service. It also means that this translates into being faster to market. You have the ability to be able to do rapid development in the portal or in Visual Studio, focusing on the business logic, what you're trying to achieve, and the uh, you know focusing on the how and not the what. And finally, you get uh, consumption-based billing with Logic Apps. You only pay for what you use. You can create Logic Apps that only run once a month and just pay for them when they run. So you get per action billing, so each step in a Logic App is how you're billed, and this um, can dramatically reduce costs compared with traditional server-based integration models. Another key point is that Logic Apps is extensible. 
You can build your own connectors on top of the nearly 200 that we provide and connect to your own line of business systems, your own APIs, and even connect to uh, SOAP services that you have um, with public endpoints and very soon on premises as well. And I'm gonna be showing you an example of how you do that. Uh, we're also extensible with other Azure services, uh, particularly Azure Functions, another one of our serverless capabilities. So you can call Azure Functions from Logic Apps, you can even create an Azure Function from inside of Logic Apps. Um, and you can do it the other way around as well, going from Functions invoking a Logic App. Um, the other thing you can do is leverage API management. So API management gives you the capability in your organization to create catalogs of APIs to promote reuse and discoverability of APIs and existing functionality. You can even consume, um, uh, sorry, you can even uh, expose our Logic App as an API and have that cataloged in API management as well. There's a lot of flexibility in the processing that Logic Apps provides. You know, integration is always a set of moving parts and management and maintenance of that is you know, central to your, um, you know, your story here. Uh, you need flexible processing so you can tackle and address any problem that you may face. And this comes in a variety of ways with Logic Apps. We have a number of different message formats that we support, everything from JSON natively through to XML, through to text, as well as binary, and including the ability to now move large um, sizes of data around from you know, blob storage to FTP up to a gigabyte. Data handling is another critical part of this where you can do conversion from one format to another, do data mappings, pulling data out of each one of these connectors that you're calling, consuming in each one of your actions, and transforming that to different formats or enriching it from the data that's being created as your Logic App executes. And you can also add complex uh, logic and expressions. So using familiar programming constructs like if, else, and switch case, and do until and for each, even running things in parallel, you're able to model a logic app as an integration workflow that uh, performs and models your business to implement the logic that you require, all without writing a line of code, and all using our high productivity graphical designer. We also have an expression language where you can um, define uh, complex expressions for things like string manipulation or date formatting, um, and that's another useful tool that's integrated right into the designer and logic apps as well. I'm now going to go to a demo and show you one of our newest features, which is custom connectors. So here I am in the Azure portal, and you see a couple of things here. You see a connector that I've created, so let's start there. This connector is a SOAP connector that wraps my SOAP service that I'll show in just a second. If I just quickly go in and edit this and show you what the options are, you'll see that I can create a custom connector in a couple of ways. I can provide the REST API for existing connector or service that I have um, described in Open API or Swagger. You can even provide a Postman collection, which is essentially just your test data against that service and the responses that it receives. Um, or I can pick SOAP, and when I pick SOAP, you see the UI changes to allow me to upload or point to Wuzdal from a file or from a URL. I can also um, provide an icon, in this case, this is a great service that is capable of adding two numbers together really quickly. So I can just add that. I can, uh, once I've imported the Wurzdal, um, it shows me the actions, the add two numbers action, and I can look at the inputs and outputs of that. Um, but let's look at the SOAP service once I've just saved that down. Um, so this is a standard WCF SOAP service that I created. It has um, a couple of operations. Uh, the one I'm interested in here is this add two numbers operation. It takes a couple of parameters, number one, number two, um, and then um, that's why you see it show up in the UI here, and it's just updated. So once it's done that and created my connector, I can go to a logic app, which is the second item here, and I can edit my logic app and add a call to my SOAP connector. So I can open this up and add a new action. Here's where you see all the different connectors that we have that you can choose from. And I can call this um, test soap, I think it's called. Yep. And you see the operations that are on my soap service exposed by the Wuzdal and mirrored in the connector. So when I pick add two numbers, it knows that it, 
what the input parameters are. You can see they call the same names, and I then need to map in the request from the HTTP trigger, which is the first step and was what makes my logic app run. Um, and I can do that very easily providing a JSON schema. Um, creating JSON schema is also very easy using this great website, jsonschema.net, where I can provide an example input and it will generate, when I hit the Submit button, the schema that I can just paste directly into my Logic App. And when I do that, I can then, um, rather than worrying about you know, how I map this data, it's done it for me. I can just pick number one, number two, and then I can choose the response and the body, and I just pick the add two numbers result. You see the experience here that I see each one of the steps in my Logic App, and I can take the data from each one of those operations, each one of those calls to the various connections you may have, and create data mappings between them. And when I save that down, I'm ready to call it. Um, note that it has an HTTP post URL here. Um, but let's have a quick look at the SOAP service, which is running on a VM that I have a debugger attached to, so I have a live breakpoint ready to go. And go over to Postman, and um, using this URL that I provide, I can then provide the two inputs, like 32 and 10. When I hit the button, it breaks in Visual Studio, and you can see what it's doing. It's taking the two input parameters, adding them together, and returning it as a result. I can click Continue. It will go back, giving the result in Postman, 42. I can go over to my Logic App and look at the run history for my Logic App and open that up, and it'll show me each step that it took and what it did. From the initial trigger where it received the two numbers, through to calling my SOAP service and showing the inputs and outputs here, 32 and 10, and then the output string, and then the response back to the caller. In this case, it was Postman making an HTTP POST request to my Logic App. Great, so how do you get started? Well, here's some resources I put up on the page to give you more information, links to our documentation, our blog. We do a monthly webcast as a team to show you what we've just been shipping over the last month, what we're doing next, and uh, you know what's on our backlog. And uh, I really want to encourage you to reach out to the team and uh, tell us whether you think we're focusing on the right things. You can go to this link, aka.ms slash logicapps-wish, and tell us what you need for your, for your own enterprise, your own organization, to use Logic Apps and integration on Azure effectively. Send us email, follow us on Twitter. Uh, really appreciate you watching this video, and I hope you found it useful. Thank you.